Washington. It's a special Halloween presentation of the NFL on EA Sports. Drew Locke and the Seattle Seahawks taking on Trevor Lawrence and the Jacksonville Jaguars. Lurching closer toward the midway point of this NFL season, and we're underway on EA Sports. Jamal Agnew now to return him. And the tackle going to be made right there at the 25-yard line. For the first time, the Jacksonville Jaguars set to go here on offense, led out by the new face of the franchise, the number one overall pick, of course, from this year's draft. It's Trevor Lawrence out of Clemson. And you've got to think that they've got to be feeling pretty fresh. You know, coming off of the open week, didn't have to play, right? Gives them a chance to rest up a little bit, heal some of those aches and pains, and excited about playing again. That really rekindles things a little bit. I want to see how they come out and establish themselves here. And that bye week coming right where they want it in the middle of the schedule. And he gets this one just shy of the 40, down at the 39. So from the 39 now, they'll come up on a first and 10. Now Lawrence to throw. And he can't find anywhere to go with it. And he goes down. Bruce Servan leading the surge there as he drops him for a loss of six. A situation they'll certainly want to avoid going forward. An early second and long they're facing. Another try after the first down sack. Lawrence and trying to find Chark, but it's intercepted. Picked off right around the 43. And he brings it back to right around the 26-yard line. Now here are the Seahawks in great shape to start their first drive. They're led out by their third-year quarterback from Missouri, Drew Locke. And I think if you ask most folks to give you their first half MVP, very likely they're going to say it's this man right here, the NFL's leader in touchdown passes to this point in the season. Still two months to go, but if he can keep going to the pace he's at, this is going to be a dangerous team come January, and he could very well walk away with the MVP. This is famous. Oh, what a catch. And down inside the 15, shy of the 10. Good job there to locate his tight end, Charles, in the middle of the field. Yeah, he has good pass-catching abilities, and if they're able to continue to find him here in the early going, I think it'll help out his teammates out on the perimeter. You can take the big shots later if he occupies their attention. This will be stopped about two yards shy of the marker. Eight-yard gain, second and two. Eight yards the tally on that first down run. Here's second and two. They'll run with Hunt. And he is in for the Seattle touchdown. Kareem Hunt, his sixth touchdown of the season. And the Seahawks have taken a first quarter lead. That almost looked too easy, and I think thanks goes to the offensive line for making it look easy. Yeah, I agree with you totally on that one. I'm not sure how much everyone understands the preparations that go into a game for an offensive line, because there's a reason that running backs and quarterbacks give them big gifts at the end of the season after a big year. The consistency and the continuity it takes to know each other and execute their blocks is pretty impressive. This fielded right at the goal line. And all deep in his own territory, he coughs up the football. And the Seahawks have picked it up. And he's going to score. It's a Seahawk touchdown. Will Disley, his third touchdown now on the year. And the Seahawks are able to strike quickly to add on to their lead. But that's got to be so disappointing for a defense. You, know, you force the fumble think you got a chance at a turnover and instead not only do you give up the football you also give up a touchdown as well yeah you just think to yourself you've done all the hard work right you forced the fumble but when they didn't come up with it I think they relaxed a little bit or maybe lost their focus as well and it ended up turning out to be a touchdown against them so here's the kickoff now as he'll get it again following that fumble return for a score taken at the goal line 
And taken down just past the 20 at about the 21-yard line. Trevor Lawrence in the Jacksonville offense ready to go back to work. And he looked to rebound from the early interception that led to six points the other way. And when he threw the interception and he had to come to the sideline, I guarantee his first thought wasn't about the interception itself, but what could result. And I know he was thinking to himself, come on, defense, bail me out. Well, they weren't able to in this situation. Now he's got to go out and atone for it himself, but he can't force things. Well, this defense for the Seahawks, they were very good last week. Looking for Jones, and it's intercepted. It's the Pro Bowl quarterback, Richard Sherman, and they will set up shop in enemy territory at the 42-yard line. Second interception for him now here in this first half. And you got to think he's a rookie, Charles. How much does confidence start to become a factor? I think that's a great question because that's what they're going to check on when he gets to the sidelines. The coach is going to check on it. His teammates are going to check on it because when you haven't done it before, it's not something that's part of you. You got to see how you're going to react. Let's see how he bounces back. Yeah, because two interceptions for him in college and a half. I mean, that just didn't happen. And he's taken down inside the 30. And as a quarterback, you're always pleased when you can use all the weapons at your disposal. Here he spots his fullback underneath, gets the completion right there for a nice pickup. And he'll take this down just shy of the 25-yard line. Two yards on the carry there. It'll be second down. Now Hunt. Two runs in a row, but only two yards to show for it. So this game, Charles, you know, we talk about potential unbeaten seasons a lot. It feels like every year at some point in the season we talk about that. But this is one of those games where if you're unbeaten, you got to be careful. You can't take this one too lightly. You're exactly right about that. And by rights, this should be a cakewalk. Almost a week off. Let the starters run up the score in the first half. Backups get to play in the second. But you and I both know that funny things sometimes happen when you think this way. So it's incumbent upon the starters to really play well to make it work for this team. They run for it with Hunt. And he gets this down to the 18. Good enough for a first down. Remember, that was fourth and a full two yards. There's a big difference between that and fourth and maybe six inches or a yard. Yeah, you're exactly right, because when it's that six inches, you just fall forward and you pick it up, right? You just go quarterback sneak. But having to move bodies, that means you actually have to execute because they know what you're going to do. How are you going to make the right play call and get everyone into the right spot and win at the line of scrimmage? That's what they did there. On second down now, it's Hunt. Yeah, able to break one tackle, but then quickly brought down. But a nice little game. They get six. That'll leave them with third and four. So if you've been playing defense in this one, there's a little bit of the good and some bad because they did give up the touchdown run to him earlier, but shut him down otherwise. Outside of that, you're exactly right. I would say they've contained him very well. No gain on the play there, and it'll bring up fourth down. This is Hunt on the draw play, and he won't get there. They stop him a few yards short of the line to gain. Kareem Hunt stops short of the sticks, and the Jaguars are going to take possession here of the turnover on downs. So not quite a first and goal. It's first and 10 from the 10. Now ETN to start the drive, and he'll take this one only up to about his 13-yard line. Bobby Wagner, the All-Pro, in on the tackle. On second and seven, Lawrence. And a dump off here to Robinson. And they're going to get this beyond the 40 before he's taken down. A big play that time on the catch and run. You can almost hear the sigh of relief coming from their sideline and from their point on the field because this has been a tough start them thus far. A much needed first down there. They needed something good to happen. Plays like that will continue to help them dig out of this hole. This offense finding its legs now. Here's another first and ten. And they'll run it. This is James Robinson. And this time they were ready for him as they'll stop him right at the line of scrimmage. Two yards the loss, second and twelve. That was well played there defensively. Two tight ends in the formation, which essentially gave them seven blockers up. And 
Behind the chain, second and 12. Lawrence with the handoff to Robinson. And now Robinson coughs up the football. It's loose. And the Seahawks have picked it up. Always costly to cough up that football. These defenders, they become so adept, though, at jarring it free. Yeah, it's amazing that there aren't more fumbles caused because now, if you're an offensive player, you go through ball security drills every single day. It's really not out of line to think you should take the ball to bed with you and just hold on to it. But the bottom line is, no matter how much you try to protect it, these guys are pretty good at finding ways to knock it out. On second down, it's Hunt. And he's going to take this across midfield into Jacksonville territory. He'll get only three there, so it leaves him with a third and seven ahead. On the delay, here's Hunt. And he'll get this into enemy territory, but not by much as he's down to the 48. Just a one-yard pickup there, and it'll be fourth down. He did have the touchdown run earlier, but not a heck of a lot more than that throughout this game. No, not at all. In fact, I would say that this defense has done as good of a job on him as they have on any runner in recent memory. That's to his running back, complete. And he's going to be out of bounds, a few yards shy of the line to gain. And that's going to be a turnover on downs. So that's the second time this Jaguars come to the line to start their next drive. And they were winners the last time they took the field, which was two weeks ago. They had the open weekly. And he loses the football the second time. And the Seahawks have picked it up. And they'll start out with great field position at the 47-yard line in enemy territory. So here are the Seahawks ready to take over on offense. They've got the lead right now, and remember, they are riding that very impressive seven-game winning streak, trying to push it to eight. On first down, they'll run with Hunt. Credit him with a one-yard gain there to make it second and nine. Well, you know, this club, there were some reports earlier in the week, and most have heard this by now, the so-called unnamed sources that were saying, all is not rosy in that locker room. There's whispers that one or two guys, CD, have kind of had enough of how things are going and have been going. How would you handle that as a coach? Well, you and I both know all the coaches that we've dealt with and come in contact with. They'd love to get their hands on those unnamed sources, wouldn't they? But they know that that's not possible. So I think they've got to go in there and make sure that this isn't a distraction. They also know that once the grumbling starts, it becomes a slippery slope and it's hard to stop the fall. But I think you need to sit some guys down and say, hey, look, we're still hoping to be a playoff team this year. We need you guys to be bought in with what we're doing. Come on, let's get on board. The Seahawks on third down. 0 for 3 to this point. They could use a conversion. This is third and eight. That's into the hands of his tight end, Will Disley. And they'll wind up getting this with all the way down inside the 20. When you get a big tight end like this, sometimes it takes more than one man to bring him down. Oftentimes, your best bet, just jump on and hold on and wait for your teammates to arrive to help get him on the ground. So the ball down to the 16 here for first and 10. Now Peterson running right. He's down inside the 10 to the 8, and it comes on a gain of 8. That play wasn't quite as big as the play that preceded it, but still, got to like the way they're moving the football, partner. Absolutely. Pretty good room to run on that last play. Yeah, they didn't get a first down, but still, you'll take runs like that each and every time, won't you? Second down, Peterson again. And he'll be stopped just outside the five at the six. Two yards on the carry there, and it's going to lead him to third down. They'll try to run for the first down with Hull. And he'll be brought down this time at the five-yard line. Well, they're currently the best in the NFL in converting on third down, so it was no surprise there that they picked that one up. And they've done it in many different ways throughout the season, Charles. Picking it up, running it, throwing it, just effective on third downs all year long. And he'll take this into the end zone. Now, hold on here. We do have a flag down. So let's see what this is about. 
celebration we'll see if they have something else in their bag of tricks and isn't that always tough to watch when they score and you see the excitement and then when they realize those points aren't going to count can they get it back together and find their way back to the end zone and he's going to get forward for about five but that may be coming back what say you mr referee against a big right tackle. You'd think being able to fire out and block it'd be a lot easier to not commit a holding penalty, but it's tough to keep those guys right in front, isn't it? Two minutes to play, first half, it's 14 to nothing. Coming up at halftime, we remind you once again that we're gonna check in with Jonathan Coachman in Orlando. He'll have stats and scores from around the NFL as we reach now, hard to believe, the halfway point of the season. Time flying. It certainly is. Time to get the sweaters out, my man. Two of their three red zone trips so far, they've come up empty on. They'll look to reverse that trend on second and goal. They'll try to run with Hunt, and he's across the chalk into the end zone. Touchdown, Seahawks. Kareem Hunt with his second touchdown of the game, number seven on the year. And the Seahawks are able to stretch that lead out a bit further. The extra point now coming from Myers. And it is now 21 to nothing. So that drive takes him down the field in eight plays. And Kareem Hunt, the one to finish it off, as he did so with a touchdown run. Out is the kickoff unit as they run up and send this one away. And this will not be returnable. It's out of the back of the end zone for a touchback. Jaguars come to the line to start their next drive. And last time, not only the turnover, but that turned into six points. They got to make up for that here. We always hear about empty possessions, but some are worse than others. So you can have an empty possession, pump the ball away, get yourself set to play defense, but when you turn it over, it changes momentum, and when they take it downfield and punch it in on you, that's a bad possession all the way around. Yeah, but you're hungry to get back out there, aren't you? You better be, because otherwise, it's going to be a long day for you. A lot of scrimmage, the 37 on first and 10. Here's Lawrence to throw. Pressure comes. He's taken down by the Seahawks defense. Now the Jags will use the second of their timeouts as the clock shows 50 seconds to play here in half number one. To try again after the sack. Lawrence. Now you've got to hustle your guys to the line and get them set. On third down, Lawrence looking downfield for Jones. Ball had his hands on it, couldn't bring it in. Pretty symptomatic of how this game's been going. On fourth down, on is Logan Cook to punt. Back deep is Philip Dorsett. Oh, he's going to go ahead and field it from the three-yard line. Well, that'll be put in the books as a 53-yard punt. And control of the football, switching hands with very little time remaining until the half. DK Metcalf of the Seattle offense about set to take over once again. Not only does he not have a catch, I don't, I don't think he's been targeted in this game, but they're winning. And if you ask a receiver of his magnitude, he'll tell you that it's because everyone is focused on him anyway. Okay, you've taken it away. Launches deep. A jump ball, and this is caught. And he's going to be taken down here with a penalty flag on the field. one they hate. The ball's got to come all the way back. So that's an explosive play, a really explosive play that gets wiped out and they have to start over after the penalty. Throwing now is Locke. Going for Metcalf on the deep ball. A leap and he's got it. He got it. And with just four seconds left in this first half, a timeout call. The big play has him all the way out near midfield for a first and ten. A final shot before half for Locke. He lets it fly for Lockett. Now that'll be tipped and intercepted. Picked off at the 14. And he will be brought down on what will be the final play of this first half. So they elect to decline it. And why not? Avoid the crazies out there and welcome in everybody to this Halloween edition 
of our EA Sports Halftime Report. We'll start by heading out west to Glendale, Arizona, where you see the final score there. Aaron Rodgers leading the way again as his guys run their mark to 8-1. and one. From there, we head to the Big Easy to check on the Saints at home in the Superdome. And they've got the lead in their matchup with the Tampa Bay Bucks. Michael Thomas, a touchdown reception. Finally, let's get down to Houston. Check on the Texans at home at NRG Stadium. And they were victorious in that one over the visiting L.A. Rams. Deshaun Watson leading the way there as the win gets his guys back to 500 on the year. Meanwhile, in our game, it's been a back-and-forth first half. Who can put it together in the second half? For the answer, we turn it back over to our broadcast team of Brandon Godden and Charles Davis. All right, Coach, thank you, and we welcome everyone back for quarter number three. The Seahawks with the advantage, and they get the football first as the second half is underway. And this is going to be returned from the middle of the end zone. And ultimately, he stopped right where he would have been if he had simply gone down to a knee at the 25. The Jacksonville defense, here they come now. And now Big Moe's wearing a shirt of their color. They're hoping to continue that momentum in their direction, but maybe another pick. Who's Big Moe's momentum, right? Momentum. And right now, he's hugging them. So a decent gain, but all for naught on the penalty. It's too bad, isn't it? They were feeling pretty good about it. The only people celebrating, the guys who just gave up that play. Following the penalty, it's Peterson. And he'll be taken down at the 20 after a gain of just one. Well done to sniff that out defensively. He had it diagnosed pretty quickly. I love that description because diagnosed is perfect on that one. Read his keys, made the play, and he couldn't even get going moving the football. And he's able to take this one up to the 35-yard line. Lock going to try and throw on third down. That's complete to Disley, the tight end. And he'll be out of bounds, but able to get it up past the 45. And while we may be looking at the scoreboard, this offense certainly is not because they're showing no signs of backing down, even with a three-score lead here in the third quarter. I think they keep taking their shots. They've seen blown leads happen throughout this league. They don't want to fall victim to it themselves. First down, here's a run with Peterson. And he's going to have just a couple here with a marker on the field as well. So some holding over on the left side of that O-line. And I know for the guys trying to move those big defensive people, they'd love for them to stay in one spot. But they move around so quick and so fast that sometimes you just have to grab them. They give it to Peterson. Strong run, but he's corralled just beyond the 40. Two yards on the pickup. It'll be second down. Block now to throw. And this one is incomplete. Oftentimes when you're losing a game and the team's still throwing with this kind of a lead, you start playing a little more physically. And they took that opportunity right there to be extremely physical and force that incompletion. And not even back to the line of scrimmage this time as they're on him quickly once more. Losing two yards that time, and now it's fourth down. And here's Dixon to punt now as he gets this one away. And this one hits at the one, continues on into the end zone for a touchback. Jaguars come to the line to start their next drive. They punted last time they had it. What steps, Charles, do you think they have to take to make sure they don't do that again? Well, let's just go to the football 101, the trite expression 101. Win first down. Make five, six, seven yards on first down and make it a second and three, second and manageable. Keep accumulating first downs that way. Keep moving the football. You don't want to get behind the sticks because then the defense has the advantage. And he slips up past the 45 before being tackled. Back-to-back -back good plays have them on the move on first down. On play action, Lawrence. 
sliding out of the pocket. And now the ball's out. Fumble near midfield. And the Seahawks have picked it up. They find some open field here. 20, 10, and they bring this one back. It's a fumble recovery. Huge play by the defense, not only to force the fumble, obviously, but to return it for a touchdown. And I know it's no fun for anyone who plays offense, but isn't it fun to see how a defense rallies when there's a fumble return and everyone tries to find someone to block and bring it all the way home? I always like their celebrations because they don't get there that often. No, they're not choreographed very well, usually. <laughs> Myers connects on the PAT, and that makes the score 28 to nothing. And you can bet they're preaching two hands on the ball here as the kicks away following that fumble return. This taken in at the goal line. And no chance to get away as they'll get him down at about the 17-yard line. Rookie Trevor Lawrence of the Jaguar offense ready to take over. So from the 17 now, here's a first and 10. From the shotgun, Lawrence over the middle, hauled in by Shark. And the result here, a pickup of eight. Leaves him with two to go on second down. A good pickup there, eight yards on the first down completion. On second down now, it's Robinson. Looking for a seam, but finding none. He'll get back to the line of scrimmage, and that's it. He got maybe a half yard at most, but officially they'll be left with a third and two. They'll run again here with Robinson. And they're going to mark him down short, maybe by about a yard, if that. Just a one-yard gain on the play, and that'll mean a call to the punt team as it's fourth down. You know, we might start getting some props here in the booth. You know, that one that says the D and then the fence that you put up next to it. How about that? They brought out the jumbo package and still couldn't move them off the line of scrimmage enough to pick up that first down. Impressive. They were ready defensively for that jumbo set. The Cook now on to punt as he gets this one away. Here's Dorsett. has to start a little bit deeper in their own territory. And Smith's throw into the hands of Fan. And he'll be taken down, but not before they work it across midfield. A big connection on that one. 33 yards. So the line of scrimmage moves all the way across the 50 now as they come up first and 10. A carry here for Hunt. And they'll get him down as he's inside the 40. 45 yards rushing for him now with a couple of touchdown runs to boot. So they go pass, now they go run, and two plays resulting in really nice pickups. Certainly sounds like a 50-50 deal, doesn't it? Sounds like great balance. And you know what all those coaches have told us over the years, Brandon, that balance is. It means doing what you want to when you want to. That play call is working very well for them right now. Three quarters have come and gone. This is the National Football League on EA Sports. Line of scrimmage, the 36 on second and eight. Now lock. Out to the right, he gets it to lock it. And he'll be brought down at the 27-yard line never make the mistake that the slot receivers, especially the little guys like we're watching here, are just quicker than fast. A lot of them combine quickness and speed, and they catch a lot of footballs, as we just saw there. That was sailed a bit, but the catch is still made. Touchdown, Seahawks. Tyler Lockett, his ninth touchdown of the season. And the Seahawks add on to their lead, and it's looking like that win streak is going to extend another week. Well, they mentioned this week, Charles, they had a couple kinks on offense that they wanted to fix. I would say they're pretty well fixed. <laughs> There's no doubt about that. I mean, just about everything they've run has been successful in this one. If I'm the defensive coordinator, I'm done with this, right? I have no answers for anything. In fact, I'd probably send a note. The 
Jacksonville set to go again offensively. Well, I think that the folks here had hoped that maybe this home atmosphere would carry their guys to a surprise victory, but it does not appear that that's going to be the case. And he can't find a receiver, and he's brought down. Carlos Dunlap picks up his second sack of the afternoon. Second and 12. Another try after the first down sack. Lawrence, and the pressure gets to him again. They get to him for a loss of four, and it brings up third down on the sack. So now after the sack of Lawrence, the Jags looking at a third and long. Now Lawrence on third and long. He finds Robinson, and he's going to be brought down short of the first at about the 31-yard line. So instead of giving them another third down, they'll decline it, brings up four. Now that's smart football right there. You don't even have to really spend a lot of time considering it. Just know that you're probably going to get the ball back. Good job declining that penalty. This is taken at about the 14. Officially, that'll go as a 52-yard punt. Not too shabby. And out will come the offense as they take over. The Seattle offense now set to come back out on the field. And this crowd has certainly liked what they've seen. Their guys fully expected to win this one coming in, and they have not disappointed as they've got the big lead here in the fourth. Here's a good way to kick off a drive complete over the middle. A gain of six there on first. Second down at four. Out of the gun, they run it with Hunt. And fights through one man. And they get him down, but not before he takes it across the 40-yard line. 60 yards on the ground for him now as he's done that on 15 carries. I know we're in the era of wide-open football, a lot of spread formations, more space, but there's still a spot for power football. We just saw some of it right there. How about that run? Yeah, breaking the tackle, and, you know, late in this game, he wants the football in his hands. He's had a good day. Now left side on the swing pass, and they'll get him down after a pickup of eight, second and two. Second down, Peterson. And they'll get him down as he's inside the 40. So this will be accepted as it moves the offense backwards. Here's Locke to throw. He finds Ursula. And he'll be corralled out across midfield down to the 45. So that one a hold right guard. And you understand why offensive and defensive linemen probably go to martial arts schools and work on their hands so often because that could be the make or break difference on a play. This time he had to grab a jersey in order to make the play happen. Got caught for the penalty. The Seahawks on third down. Three for seven so far in this game. This will be third and forever. And he can only get this to the 42-yard line. And that is not near enough. So they decline it as that will bring up four. And I know that yardage and field position are keys to any game played. But you've got to consider downs when you're talking about penalties. And they wisely did not take that one and made it fourth down. And it's gonna be batted down. It will go the other way with the football. Pete Carroll rolled the dice, but it didn't work out. And the Jags take over in terrific field position. Now Lawrence on first down. And he's gonna get this inside the 30. As a rookie quarterback, that's exactly how you endear yourself to your teammates. Give it up for the cause. It's also how you end up on the training table, too. Yeah, it's a catch-22. Coach doesn't like it. Teammates love it. Where do you fall on it? Well, I fall on wanting to endear yourself to your teammates, but pick your spots. Be smart about it. They need you for the full season. Yeah, the rookie's going to learn as he goes. And now, defensively, they're going to burn their first time out. Remember, they get an extra time built in coming up here shortly at the two-minute warning. 
Throwing again on second down. Lawrence on the slant. He'll get it to Jones. And they'll get this down to the 10. Just two minutes remaining here in the fourth quarter of what has been a one-sided affair. So it's Jaguar football here as we welcome you back. They've got a first and 10 as they search for a late score. Throwing now, Lawrence on first down. And he's going to be intercepted for the third time thus far. Picked off down at the 2. The 40. The 20. And he will take this one home. It's a touchdown. So this defense doubling its pleasure there. Remember, they had the fumble return for a score earlier in the game, and now this time an interception return for another score. Now Myers for the extra point. Now this one was over a while ago as they just add on to their big lead. A heck of a play there defensively, getting the interception, navigating his way into the end zone for the touchdown. Now Jamal Agnew from his end zone. The rookie Trevor Lawrence of the Jaguar offense ready to take over. to the interception. Lawrence. And this one into the hands of D.J. Shark. Fired that one in there, able to make connection on a nice in route. With those faster passes and they're going that fast, any hesitation as a quarterback that the deflection, if you miss, might be bigger and lead to an interception? Yeah, and the deflection works both ways. Maybe a defender gets a hand in the way and it pops in the air. And sometimes you throw it so hard your receiver can't handle it, and he pops it up in the air for the defenders to grab as well. But a moot point there is they were able to connect. And he'll be taken down, but not before he works it past the 50. Offense for them has been at a premium. You wonder where plays like that have been all game long. They're thinking the exact same thing themselves, but they're also looking forward now because now these plays are really for next week, trying to get some momentum going. That's a throw again is Lawrence. And the Seahawks defense gets to him and they bring him down. Now the Seahawks forced to use their third and final timeout. That'll be their third and final stoppage here as we step aside. After the sack on first down, Lawrence under pressure, and they got to him again. Bobby Wagner multiple times in all pro in there to drop him for a loss. So now after the sack of Lawrence, the Jags looking at a third and long. Over the middle, he's got Chanel. The completion good for only six, and that'll bring up fourth. So the victory here for Seattle. And I tell you what, Charles, this might be about as good as it gets. They were incredible. Yeah, offense was in fine form. The defense threw the shutout at them. I think they worked in concert together. What I like about the offense was they held the ball pretty well. You know, time of possession, exactly what they were looking for in this one. And that helped out their defense. Didn't have to be out there the entire time. So when you do that and you're out there fresh playing, off a little extra spring in your step, 